Okay, so what we're asked here is we're given a, a lamina ABC, that's a three point surface. Um, it's floating in midair and it's pointing away from us. So the horizontal and vertical trace will be cutting inwards, we know that. What we're asked first of all is to draw the traces of that plane. So the first trace you should always draw is the horizontal trace, that's the one that's on the ground. In order to do that, you need two points on the ground and just join them together. Now, we don't have two points on the ground because A, B and C are all above the zero line. But what we can do is we can go to the apex of our shape, the highest point, which is A, and we can look down through those points until they do hit the ground. So I look through AC. That will eventually, if I look straight down that line, that will hit the ground eventually. I do the same for AB. Look down it, it will hit the ground eventually. Where they hit the ground, drop them straight down to your plan view. The same with B, drop it straight down. And then look through exactly the same lines in the plan view. So AC, look through it, you'll find they cross over each other. So that is one point on the ground. Do exactly the same from AB, look through it. Again, they cross over each other, where I dropped it down originally from the plan view. Look through AB, cross over. That's the second point on the ground. So when I join those two ground points together, I have my horizontal trace. To find the vertical trace, you should be okay with this now. Once you get your horizontal trace, you have the work done. We, ha we have our usual step here. We have our horizontal trace. We go to the highest point on the surface we're talking about. That's point A. We replicate the angle. Hits the XY line. We bring it straight up. We take a height reference from A across. And that's a point on our vertical trace. We join that back to our origin. And that's part A of that question complete. Right, so that's the kind of a, that's one that's coming up all the time. That'll be in your section B as well. The second part of that, which might throw some of you off, but is very very straightforward. They're asking you to indicate in degrees the true angle between the traces of the oblique plane. So, as you can appreciate, that's kind of if you had a set square in front of you pointing away from you, that's what your traces are like at the minute. They're asking you to find the true angle between them. So what you would do is get an edge view of it. Now to get an edge view of it, we always look along the ground. The horizontal trace is on the ground, so we're going to look along the horizontal trace. We're going to create an auxiliary view. So we get our x1, y1 line, 90 degrees to our horizontal trace. We look up along it. The horizontal trace is on the ground, so that means I see it just as a single point. So that's my horizontal trace. Now in order to get an angle here, that I can actually measure, I have to have a point up above ground height at some stage. If I look at my plane, A, B, C, that's what this thing was slapped on top of in the first place. So all of those three points are on my oblique plane. So I can pick any of them. I went for point A just because it was the highest one. So I'm bringing point A up to my auxiliary view. I'm getting the height of from the elevation. I'm marking off the height. That's point A in the auxiliary. And what that will leave me with is an edge view of my oblique plane. Now, when you have an edge view of it, it's just a case of measuring the angle. And they ask you to indicate it. So I would have got an angle of 44 degrees. That might vary by a degree or two, according to your actual um, your accuracy or whatever else. There's another method where you can rotate the actual plane onto the ground and then measure the angle, which is absolutely fine. But this is more common, like we'd be used to seeing this sort of thing, looking along the ground, getting an edge view of it, measuring the 